So let's make sure we know when splitting will occur, how far or how close do the hydrogens need to be to split one another. Well, in the most simple case that we see here on the left, we should know that these two hydrogens are definitely close enough to split each other. The carbon connected to each hydrogen is a neighboring carbon, so splitting will be observed. We also saw an example in the case on the right here that even these two hydrogens can split each other. Remember, of course, assuming that they are different hydrogens. What's unique, remember, about this case is that the hydrogens are connected to the same carbon, so they're definitely close enough to split signals. However, what we haven't seen yet is this case right here. In the NMR, you can actually observe that this hydrogen right here could possibly split this hydrogen right there and vice versa. Notice how far they are apart here. This hydrogen right here is connected to this carbon. We have a double bond right here. This would be the neighboring carbon. Then we have a single bond and another additional carbon over here and then the next hydrogen. When splitting is observed in this case, it's appropriately called long range coupling. But what you see in front of you, all of that is necessary in order for long range coupling to take place. The theory behind it is notice we have a double bond. And remember, double bonds are shorter in length. They're shorter than single bonds. So the shortness of the double bond brings these two hydrogens a little closer together. And that's why these two can actually split each other's signal. However, in this case right here, there would be no splitting observed between these two hydrogens. Notice there's no double bond, there's just all single bonds. So notice spin-spin splitting occurs over a kind of a short range. The effect is limited. The hydrogens have to be in a certain proximity in order for splitting to occur. And these examples show when we should apply splitting and when we should not apply splitting. So there it is, the fourth aspect of NMR, and that is number four here, peaks can be split due to neighboring or different hydrogens, and what they do is follow what's called an N plus one rule. We now know how to use that N plus one rule, but that's about it. Please watch the other online lectures to figure out why this happens and how to handle what's called complex splitting. This, remember, is just merely a introduction to this fourth aspect. There is a lot more involved here.